As I've seen time and time again in my own personal experience, being able to develop and implement an effective project schedule is critical to the delivery of successful construction projects. Having a realistic and achievable project schedule that is relevant and useful as the baseline for planning and delivering works is critical to success. To emphasize this, I wanna go through two examples from my own experiences. One where we effectively used project scheduling and one where we didn't. I'll briefly run through what we did and why it did or did not work. The first scenario I was involved in was a package of works to install around seven kilometers of underground cable conduits and rail systems equipment foundations. It involved a lot of excavations, working around live in-ground services, interfaces with live train running and other project teams and logistical challenges of working in busy public areas. We also had a very tight delivery time frame, under three months, to complete the entire scope. To ensure we met the time frame, we planned extensively. We decomposed the entire scope into pieces, estimated activity durations and link linkages. We worked out our key constraints during the planning phase, mainly subcontractor resourcing and tight lead times for precast concrete pits. Through the procurement phase and then into contract award, we worked with our subcontractors to get their buy-in to our target schedule and passed on the risk of, risk of completion to them. During delivery, delivery, we followed the plan as best we could. Where there were changes, we quickly updated the project schedule to ensure it stayed relevant and applicable to the works. We did have some unforeseen circumstances play out, namely requiring, requiring us to change the sequencing of works due to clashes with subsurface drainage, and we managed these changes effectively. Every day, we carefully tracked and monitored progress, measuring exactly how much work was complete and carefully monitored and compared planned and actual progress. Where we, where we were falling behind schedule, we worked with our subcontractors to rectify this. In the end, we ended up completing the works ahead of our planned schedule and handing over to the client by the practical completion date. The works were performed under budget and to a high quality standard. We also maintained good relationships with our subcontractor and client, as both of their expectations were managed and met. We were only pushing our subcontractor to meet milestones they were already aware of. In summary, the way we planned to deliver the works was an accurate representation of how they were delivered. In the second scenario I was involved in a project to construct a new train station, the project had three interim milestones, known as separable portions we had to meet. The design had some major issues and was very complex. Due to some major delays in design and utility relocations, our construction program got pushed and we were under pressure to complete procurement quickly. The original project schedule developed also missed some major activity languages that heavily impacted the sequencing of works. As a result, the program subcontractors bought into during the procurement phase ended up being almost irrelevant by the time works commenced. While delivering the works, we encountered significant challenges and issues but were able to deliver the project on time and meet all the separable portion outcomes. Unfortunately, as each of these milestones was met, we needed to accelerate works and spend additional money from acceleration claims and coordination issues from subcontractors. The works were stressful and reactive, and as some of these milestones were met, the plan would change almost daily as we scrambled to work out how to complete everything we needed to. Basically, there was a massive difference between what was planned and what was delivered, and the outcome was increased cost and reduced quality standards, unnecessary stress and confrontation. As you go through the course, keep these examples in mind when developing the schedule and eventually delivering the project. We want to make sure the schedule remains at a remains a useful and relevant tool for managing the works. Effectively, we need to ensure the plan reflects how we were actually planning on delivering the project. As you go through the course, keep these examples in mind when developing the schedule and eventually delivering the project. We want to make sure the schedule remains, at a, remains a useful and relevant tool for managing the works. Effectively, we need to ensure the plan reflects how we were actually planning on delivering the project.